here they go again after being absolutely pantsed oh. in the second Ashes test <laughs> and going 2 nil down. England are once again banging on and on about the stumping of Johnny Bairstow oh. on supposed violation of the spirit of cricket. And now it has escalated into an international diplomatic incident of epic proportions. The Poms are moaning about this moment from the second test. Oh, now, this is going to be interesting. Johnny Bairstow's walked out of his crease here. This could well be out. When England batsman Johnny Bairstow clumsily left his crease thinking the ball was dead, our keeper Alex Carey threw down his stumps. I don't think there was a call of over. We've got to wait for the umpire to call over and then the ball is dead. That ball is still very much alive. It led to an Aussie victory and a subsequent avalanche of grief from bleeding heart Englishmen. The Lord's members section blew their top hats. Locals searched their feelings. It was not in the spirit of the game. It was the end of the over. A warning would have been fine. And England fast bowler Stuart Broad whined in a Daily Mail article that he, quote, couldn't believe the Aussies could do such a thing. Clearly forgetting the time in the 2013 Ashes where he edged the ball to slips and refused to admit it. Oh, my goodness me. That's a huge nick. The audacity. And now their tiny Prime Minister, who himself is about the size of a cricket stump, has weighed in. His spokesperson saying... He simply wouldn't want to win a game in the manner Australia did. Adding that Australia's behaviour was not in the spirit of cricket. It's even driven a wedge between the Poms and Aussies here in the project office. Guys, it is clearly within the laws. Kerry immediately fires it back from the grassy knoll. And look here, Johnny Bairstow, he leaves his crease, the stumps are broken, then his head goes back and to the left. Do you see that? Back and to the left. Back and to the back left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Left, left. Thoughts? I'm really not convinced, mate. Australia definitely cheats. Do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> huh? Our PM today throwing fuel on the fire, tweeting... Same old Aussies, always winning. While our former PM probably regretted doing this. Oh. <laughs> Can our Commonwealth even survive this? Oh, now, this is going to be interesting. Pack a whinging <laughs> Wow. <laughs> uh, next question is an English sports commentator who works for Stan Sports here in Australia, The Guardian in the UK. He's married to an Australian, but right now he's in London. He's the perfect person to talk about this. Max, which side of history are you on? <laughs> well, it's nice to be on, thanks for having me, I presume, to shout at me at, at some point. <laughs> Interestingly, when, ah. when, Alex Carey, when Alex Carey took the ball, I was actually sitting on my sofa in Northcote in the, you know, the hipster suburbs of Melbourne. But as soon as he released it, I booked my flight to London. <laughs> and I, I came... And by the time I actually hit the stumps, I was already back here in my flat which, coincidentally, like all your London contributors, overlooks Tower Bridge. <laughs> and, obviously, I was just filled with, filled with in, indignant rage about the whole thing. And, look, there are huge implications, aren't there, for sort of UK-Australian diplomatic ties, which I presume will be cut <laughs> completely. You're going to have to get those submarines off the French again. From a, a personal point of view, it's obviously difficult because I can no longer talk to my wife or my son. <laughs> um, I'm obviously not going to talk to an Australian ever again, so I can't even ask... Front and Janet over the road if it's yellow bin or green bin <laughs> oh, no. I want a strong three-quarter oh, flat white wow. from Northcote High Street. I have to just use points and grunts. Yep. Um, and we all knew, right? Look, look, we all knew that Australians are a dishonest people. Whoa. Right? That's where this comes from. What am I hearing? So, what am I hearing? Well, Max, so, so it was not your fault. people's it's, idea. Yes. It was your people's idea to send all the criminals here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame well, us for that. <laughs> I, I, I thought that might come up. Yeah, listen, so Alex Kelly didn't have agency in this. It was, just what, it was just what he would have done. And I think a lot of people are asking the question, you know, had it been Johnny Bairstow, if it had been an English person who'd done that, yeah. would it be different? And, and the thing is, of course it would, because that would have been an, an honest person <laughs> doing, 
the throw. <laughs> and no English person has, or, has ever tried to game the system or gain an unfair advantage, not just in sport, just in, in life in general. <laughs> so it's, it's impossible to compare those two completely identical situations. Yes, I'm glad that you've admitted this, Max, because this is what I'm talking about. The indignation, it's not that at all, is it? It's just jealousy. It's jealousy that we won. And Johnny Bairstow, when he tried this on day three of the same test, <gasps> couldn't pull it off. Ooh. Well, th there's a slight difference between the two. <laughs> I, I, it's really interesting, I think. Right, right. Obviously, I think it's probably not cool. I think probably if you boil it down to how you really want to win, that's probably not how what you want to win. And what you really want is the moral high ground and to win. And I think what is really interesting is we're all faced with moral dilemmas in our life, but it's very rare you have like a 30 second time limit to decide what to do with your moral <laughs> dilemma. That's, and, and you know, they don't stand there going, what are the ramifications of this? So I, I can see from that point of view that you just, you get the wicket, you think, let's do this, this is great. And I think if it had been the other way around, I don't think we'd have had a, a massive problem. And also, you know, anyone who really upsets the red trousered, red blazered, red nose brigade oh. in the MCC, they can't yeah. be doing they can't be doing everything wrong. <laughs> wow, you've talked yourself around, Matt. Yeah, I think so. Uh, genuinely, what I find so interesting is there's so much has been talked about. We're talking about it now. It's a fascinating topic. The rules of cricket are like something you could talk about for days and days and days. And it was out. There's no arguing with that. But at a time when there's just been a report out in English cricket that just says there's still problems with institutional racism and sexism and like pathways for state school kids to get to any sort of elite level. I find it quite hard to get really exercised about a bit of play on the pitch. I don't know what the situation is like in Australia. It might be very similar. It might not. But like we, we in all sports, I mainly cover soccer, right? We, we get really overexcited and spent way too much time talking about things on the pitch that don't really matter. Did he dive? Didn't he dive? And there are huge problems around the game that we spend much less time on. So that's my serious part uh, of the answer to this generally light-hearted interview. <laughs> Max, but your country folk don't share your pragmatism about this, do they? So are you at all concerned um, that, that the Poms are living up to their reputation as being whinging? <laughs> <laughs> well... I mean, like, if we want to get into a whinging poms cheating Australians, Whoa. like, you know, should we just fill Headingley with sandpaper, etc., etc.? Et it's the cheating there Aussies thing so there, unfair. There are... Yes, we've cheated a lot, but you shouldn't <laughs> label us like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, Headingley will be really interesting, Lee. Like, Headingley's a brilliant place to play cricket. The atmosphere will be, like, it will be intense. <laughs> and, like, there'll be a lot of pantomime booing of oh. the Australians and some real booing as well. I wouldn't discount us, right? I still think we can do it. So I, the result will depend on whether I come back or not, if <laughs> okay. anybody cares. Um, yes. Is it, I mean, deep down, isn't everybody happy here? I mean, Rishi Sunak, for example, said, oh, we wouldn't... We wouldn't want to win this way. Well, you got your wish. You didn't win this way, <laughs> and now it's 2-0. You get to whinge. That's what you guys do well. You do you, and we win. That's what we yeah, do. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, isn't no, this no, everybody no. playing the role they were born to play? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. And actually, sport, sport, now I think about it, it isn't about winning, right? It isn't about winning. It's about losing gallantly. It's about yeah. having honour. Yeah. And like we said... There is not one... You find me one moment in history where an English cricketer has not been anything but honest. Yeah. And oh, what, uh, I, very, it's I, a really good I don't point. think you'll be able to find one. Max, thanks so much for sharing your whinging. <laughs> uh, total pleasure. And if it means I don't have to take a toddler on a 24-hour flight ever again, then it's been worth it. <laughs>